I think I may have found the best 35mm camera for a beginner film photographer. Alright, let me explain. So the other week I purchased this book here called Shop Cats of China in, I think I was in Exeter when I bought it. And basically I've got a project that's quite similar to this where I'm going to take photos of cats on the film. One thing that I noticed about this book is a lot of the photos, it would be hard to capture those photos of cats if you were manual focusing. And since I'm doing this all on film and I don't have an autofocus film camera, I thought I should look around for one. After doing some research, I found a camera called, um, the name isn't coming to me right now, but basically I could not find the camera in the UK for less than like 150 to 200 pounds. And the only place I could find it for like a reasonable price was Japan, but I don't really want to order from Japan because it takes quite a long time. I then found out that this camera goes by a different name and that is the Canon EOS 30. As soon as I searched this up in eBay, I found hundreds if not thousands of different results from the UK. But yeah, this is the camera that I think could possibly be the best beginner film camera. And here it is. This is a very basic film camera and it's pretty much just a glorified point and shoot with a lot more options since you can shoot it in manual. I'm pretty sure this camera was released in the late 90s or early 2000s. It is a very good beginner film camera and it is very easy to use. It uses the EF mount so you can put all of your uh, Canon EF mount lenses on it and it also does have autofocus. With this one right here, it did come with this battery grip so it has a lot more charge and I can use it for a lot longer. I've used this uh, quite a few times in the past few weeks and uh, it's not gotten down one bit in battery. If you take off the battery grip, it looks just like this. It is uh, very similar looking to the Canon 80D, which is what I'm recording this on. And uh, it's very, very lightweight, like it barely weighs anything. Now, why do I think this is the best beginner film camera? There's a few reasons and one of them is the lens. Since this is an EF mount camera, you can fit any of the EF mount Canon lenses on it. I know a lot of people shoot on Canon and they may be coming from Canon with a few lenses and they want to get a film camera. This means you can use every lens that you've got from your Canon camera, including the kit lens, which is very useful. And uh, if you do have a crop sensor camera, it means it's going to be full frame with this film camera. With the advantage of being able to use a multitude of lenses made by Canon that you may already own, you can definitely get some very nice photos since these lenses are very good quality. On it right now, I have the Canon Niffy 50, the 50mm 1.8, and it is the first time seeing this lens not on crop sensor, and it looks really good. Another reason why I think this camera is great for a beginner is it has program modes. You have manual, aperture priority, shutter priority, and P, which I think is just fully automatic. I, I, I think that's what it is, don't take my word for that. It's basically just got a bunch of modes on it that are very useful if you do not know exactly what you're doing with a camera. This is a perfect camera if you are looking to just get that nice film look but you don't want to spend a lot of money and you don't really want to get one of the old ones that you have to do all manually. One of the really cool things that I found out about this camera, which uh, has honestly just blown my mind, is there is a setting over here called eye control. If you click that in and then set this dial on the top here, to the middle option for eye control, wherever you look in the viewfinder, it will focus to that point. And I don't just mean wherever you point the camera, I mean wherever you look. So where your eye is looking, it will focus to that point. It is old technology, so it isn't like the best, but it's still good enough. I'm pretty sure this technology is only in the newer mirrorless Canon cameras, and obviously a few other brands, but specifically for Canon, I think it's only in the newer mirrorless ones. This camera also has a fast shutter speed option, so you can go for a roll very quickly, and I'm just going to waste some frames just for the purpose of being able to show you uh, how fast this sh can shoot. I should have just done this without a roll in it, but... Yeah, I could shoot fast. <laughs> Personally, I don't see why you would use this in this camera. I did use it a few weeks back just to test it out since I didn't realize you could do it. And I saw the little uh, fast shutter thing there and I was like, oh, how fast is it? And I, I just shot a few photos and I used, uh, 
up a lot of my roll. <laughs> this camera also has multiple focus modes, for instance, one shot, AI focus, and AI servo. I'm not entirely sure what one shot actually means, but I know AI focus is just standard focusing and an AI servo is continuous focusing on the subject. Or maybe one shot is just focusing on the subject, AI focus is focusing as they're moving, and then AI servo is a mix, a mix of both of them. I'm not entirely sure. This camera also comes with a pop-up flash that makes a little uh, charging up sound whenever you do it, which means you can get some very nice nighttime photos. Uh, if you're taking this out with your friends and you just want to get some like, you know, quick shots of them, but you also want to maybe have a camera that's more professional, this is the perfect one to do so. And my final reason why I think this is a very good camera for a beginner film photographer is the fact that it is cheap. And when I say cheap, I mean under £100 cheap. Yes, the lens will cost you a bit more depending on what lens you get, but you can find an 18 to 55 kit lens for very cheap and that will pretty much just do like everything you need it to do for, you know, being a beginner. Personally, I started on a Canon 1300D and for the first year and a half, I'd say, I only shot the 18 to 55 until I got this 50mm. The reason they are so cheap even though having such great technology in them, is because they don't have that really nice vintage film camera aesthetic. But if you don't care about looks and you just want a camera that is going to get good results and has a wide selection of lenses and a lot of options that are going to help you as a beginner, this is the camera to go for. I got mine for £60, so £50 plus £10 shipping, and that came with the battery grip, but you can find them for cheaper than that without the battery grip. I've seen these from like, 20 to 30 pounds and if you do some digging i'm sure you can find them for maybe like 10 pounds this means you can still take great quality images and save a lot of money for film anyway if you would like to get a film camera that is cheap reliable and can take some great photos i recommend this one that's gonna be the end of this video and i shall see you in the next one goodbye